everybody, it's Talbot here at Allentown FMA Check-In 1923 Midnight Adventures. This team that we've been following for a long time, really been enjoying the robots they've been creating. Last year, two district wins, five off-season wins, including IRI as well, too. So really coming to this event, looking great. Watched them uh, yesterday during practice and today, a really cool machine. Take a look at 1923. They have almost this Transformer-esque uh, based robot this year, and I really like that. We'll be talking about a lot of different custom work they've been doing on this robot so far. It's a gorgeous machine, but very functional as well, too. So let's dive more into what's come together here for Midnight Adventures on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. But now let's start out talking about on your dry train here, doing some cool custom work, especially with your wheels, and then we'll be covering more about your intake. Yeah. So with our drivetrain, we use MK4i L3 modules and a swerve drive. Nothing is too unique about our drivetrain except for the fact that we actually switched off of the Colsons that we used last year, and now we have, we have 3D printed tread. Now what an upside of this 3D printed tread is that with the new carpet this year especially, it's very important to stay um, close to the ground and have a lot of traction on your wheels. That's what this tread helps us do. A con to this wheel is that if you're looking to use it, it uh, every few matches you're going to have to swap but and you need a 3d printer ready but it's very very nice to use diving into our um, our base itself we have a very low center of gravity which I believe is a maximum of not even eight inches off the ground especially even when our arm is in max extension um, we are 123 pounds and very very dense without bumpers and battery and something similar last year is we're actually the exact same frame size as last year and the reason we wanted to stay small this year is because there's the stage that you have to go under, there's the uh, chain that you might need to climb with teammates, and that's gonna be hard if you're a very big robot. So we like to stay small. Talk to me more about your, uh, your intake, what's going on into that. So moving on to our intake, we have an over the bumper intake for uh, two main reasons. One is that we feel that it gives us more reach and we'll be able to, whether it's auto or teleop, reach notes faster. And the second reason is that it's a very nice handoff into our shooter system. Um, and our intake is actually the most iterated um, subsystem on our robot as we are on V3, I believe, maybe even V4. So talk to me about what some of those iterations look like. So our first iteration was a different angle of drop through our intake and the issue with that was the top roller couldn't do everything. So initially this bottom roller was not added into our initial iteration. Then we had to add a second, our second iteration included this bottom roller but the geometry was still a little messed off, messed up, and our handoff wasn't so smooth. And then we moved into our third, which we finally hammered it down. Our handoff's good, our intake's good, and we feel good. Having a, a drop down intake, there's always a potential concern with like getting ran into or anything like that. Yeah. What kind of considerations has your team had for that? Um, we actually uh, consider the material of this bottom roller. We switched it from, I believe, aluminum to plastic, just to make sure that w when it hits a wall or when it's hit from a corner, it won't bend as much and it'll come back to its state. Um, and yeah, we think that this is very, we know that this is very strong and solid and we have 3D printed covers for our Krakens and pulleys. Pretty sure let's talk about that awesome shooter that your team has. Uh, this arm and shooter combo just looks so cool on the field. So talk to me more about uh, the composition of it and just some of the things that have gone into it, especially your journey uh, throughout the crescendo season. Mm -hmm. So our arm, we designed it so it can do a lot with very little movement. So currently what we do is that this whole system moves and when we do our range shot, which allows us to shoot from further than the podium, it can go up to multiple angles. And then at max extension, um, it has two sets of rollers. It has a shooter wheels and it has a feeder wheels. And what we can do in this stage is we can shoot in the amp where the note travels down and we can also shoot into the speaker with our intake facing the speaker and we shoot up. Something else um, that our arm design is capable of 
is it can shoot from both the front and back of the robot. So if we're ever in a scenario where we're juggling a lot of robots, a lot of different like match flow strategies, um, we intake a piece and we directly shoot and we never have to worry about rotating 180. I actually think I saw them in one of your uh, practice matches yesterday where you go up to a subwoofer and I noticed you're shooting both frontwards and backwards. So that's really cool to have that versatility there. Yep. So uh, arm wise on it, um, when you're looking at packaging for something like this, like what considerations did you have to make in order to get all this within your robot frame and make it all work out? Yeah, so when everything comes together, there's very small um, amount of space in between the two mechanisms, but it's just enough so that nothing hits and nothing gets in the way and everything's smooth. We also had to make sure, we wanted to keep everything dense, obviously, to um, keep our robot like centered and strong. And we have our whole elbow and arm geometry um, on chains and like high gear ratios, so it's like heavily torqued. And something else to be included on our arm are the climber hooks. So something that we do is we go up into a certain like shooter position, we hook on, and then the natural position of the arm is to come down, which lifts the robot up. And have, do you have any considerations for the trap at this point, or would that be something in the future you might look at? So that's something we have started thinking about. We think, um, We've also already tested a little bit of it, but a certain angle with the shooter and a certain speed, we think we can shoot in the trap, but that is a future project. Absolutely with that. You know, in order to get all this packaging right, uh, Dasha, we got to talk about this awesome wire management that your uh, team has as well. This yes, is gorgeous, by the way. So just talk to me about uh, what considerations you've had to made to get all this in scope and, uh, and maybe any advice for teams who are looking at making really nice wire management like your team has. Yeah, so as you can see here, we have like beam brakes here and we also have Krakens installed into the robot which means that we have small wires and big wires to manage. So because there's this, yeah, can you bring the arm up? Thank you. Because this mechanism is very, very tight. If you look here, the wires here don't have a lot of space because of how dense the robot itself is. So we used wire sleeving to entangle like the groups of wires such that if we had to replace all of the wires for one crack, one single Kraken, we, were, we would be able to just like pull it out and install one and install another group of wires. And also for our sensors, the beam brakes, we put all of the beam brakes together in one chain, such like this chain here, such that they're also running all together instead of just being having loose wires on the robot. And then these wires go into the inside of the robot and then distribute it into the rest of the electrical board. So, so for, for other teams that are looking at maybe having something like this, what, what lessons have you learned uh, in order to incorporate this as nicely as you have? Yeah, I think the main lesson is to make sure that one, you have slack because there's moving parts in the robot. So you would want to make sure that like none of the wires get super tight when the robot moves because that's a big thing here, for example. Um, on this part of the robot, when the arm goes down, these wires tighten a lot because of the rotation of the arm. If you bring it up, thank you. So as you can see, when the robot is like all uh, like all together, you can see that there's a little bit of slack here, but not too much. This is designed so that um, so that there's no like loose wires, but we also need to make sure that obviously when it's all together, that the wires are um, like not in the way and not tight. Yep. Shubhan, let's talk about programming and the uh, state machines that you're doing. We'll uh, showcase uh, kind of the different positions you're doing because this, this just looks so cool in the field and I think we really got to run through this. Yeah, so um, for each of our different subsystems, we consider different states that they might be in. So for example, in the arm, as Krisha demonstrated, we have different um, arm positions where we want to score in a speaker, we want to score in the amp, or we want to score in a subwoofer. And we, are, we call these states in our code, which are enums that are associated with physical measurements as well, whether these measurements be the RPM of our wheels or the radians of our arm or rotations of our arm. And um, we update, so all the operator and driver have to do are update the desired states that they want to go to. So we tried, we did this way because we wanted to automate most of our movement and also make it easier on our drive team. So for example, when Prisha is controlling the robot, she'll select the desired state she wants to shoot at. And in the command and periodic loop of our subsystems, we're able to update the position because each state has a physical um, measurement connected with it. It updates its position and goes there automatically instead of having to control it. So we can give you a demonstration of this. So when Prisha is deploying the intake here, she's setting the desired state of the intake to be deployed and the intake rollers to spin inward. And so she presses that, she's, her button changes the desired states and we automate the movement as well. And something I want to point out is 
based on where we want to score, we can automate where the game piece is going. So right now we're in amp. If you want to shoot in range or subwoofer, the game piece moves back and forth between the two. And that just, um, we automated that because we found sometimes the note gets caught in the amp if it's too far in or the note shoots early when it's too far out. So that's what, that's a benefit of using a state system because you're able to track that. So now we're in it. We want to score an amp. Pisha just um, sets a desired scoring state to amp and all Chuck can have to, all Vidal has to do is press a button and it will score the game piece. So we can do, we can show you subwoofer, reverse subwoofer as well. So intake again. Oh, here's our source intake. So we can intake from the ground as well as the source. And now we can shoot from subwoofer, so Pisa can set the desired state to subwoofer. And... And it shoots... So all Chuckin has to do is press a button to shoot the game, please. Well, 1923 Midnight Adventures, what a phenomenal machine that you built uh, once again. So congratulations on a, a great rollout. We can't wait to see how you do here uh, at this event, but of course throughout the rest of the uh, year as well too. So thanks a lot. I think teams can really learn a lot from this. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how you do overall. Thanks a lot, everybody. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.